Good morning students, this is Mr. Boyd. Welcome back to another algebra lesson. In this lesson today we're going to look at the observations from a graph of a quadratic function. So we're starting sec uh, section 6 or unit 6 on graphing quadratics. We want to take a look at different features of quadratics. So let's go ahead and run through our vocabulary to start with. The graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. The point that identifies the maximum or minimum is called the vertex. The blank is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. Now you should be familiar with this from linear equations. This is called the y-intercept. And of course the point where the graph crosses the x-axis is called the x-intercept. And it should be noted that the y-intercept would be 0, comma, some y-value, and the x-intercept would be some x-value, comma, 0. The axis of symmetry is the invisible line. Sometimes it's called the line of symmetry. <coughs> that divides a parabola into two congruent halves. The, ex, the axis of sim, symmetry is a line of reflection. The line passes through the vertex. That's important to note. Okay, so let's take a look at a few of these. Find the vertex, axis of symmetry, x-intercepts, and y-intercepts of these graphs below. So first of all, let's attack the vertex. So the vertex would be right here. Let me grab a different colored pen. Vertex would be right here. That is the lowest point on the graph. And that is the point 1, comma, negative 4. So our vertex is at 1, comma, negative 4. Our axis of symmetry. is the line that passes through, the vertical line that passes through that vertex. Well, the equation for that line is x equals 1. Notice that is that it is the x value of the vertex. Okay, next thing we want to uh, identify is our x-intercepts. So our x-intercepts are right here. These are also known as zeros. They're also called solutions, and sometimes they're called roots. Any of that language could be used. So let's say our x-intercepts are negative 1, comma, 0, and um, 3, comma, 0. Last thing we want to identify is our y-intercepts. There's only one, and the y-intercept would be right down here, and that would be 0, negative 3. Okay? All right, pause the video, and you try the next one. Okay, so back with you guys. I'm going to go ahead and identify the vertex first, since that is the turning point of this thing, of this parabola. So the vertex is at 2, comma, negative 4. The axis of symmetry, and I'll just abbreviate that AOS again, is the equation x equals 2. The x-intercepts, notice that this graph does not cross the x-axis. There, there are no x-intercepts. So this would actually have no solutions. OK. 
Okay, the y-intercept is right down here, and we'll call that y, oh, excuse me, we'll call that point 0, comma, negative 5.2, something like that. I'm kind of having to estimate this one. Okay, so let's move along here. Finish the graph, then find the x-intercepts, y-intercepts, domain, increasing and decreasing intervals. Okay, so we're told that the point for negative 2 is our vertex. So here's our vertex right here. So we know that there is a reflecting line that runs through that vertex. So the way that we can complete this graph is reflect each of these points across that reflecting line. So this point here is one unit away from the reflecting line, so it will be one unit away directly on the other side of the line of symmetry. This point is two units away from our line of symmetry, so it we would have another point on this side. And then to complete it, we would just simply draw the curve and just do the best you can to freehand it. The left side is always the most difficult for me, I guess, because I'm right-handed. So anyway, our y-intercept would be right here. That would be the point 0, comma, 6. Uh, our x-intercepts are right here and right here. So that's the point 2, comma, 0 and 6, comma, 0. So the solutions... would be 2 and 6 if we had the equation and could factor it or, or uh, use the quadratic formula. Um, let's see, what else do we need to find? X-intercepts, Y-intercepts, domain. The domain. Notice that this does not end. There is no limit to the, direct, to the X direction. So the domain is all real numbers. How about the range? So the range, the lowest point is negative 2, so we would say that it's the set of y's such that y is greater than or equal to negative 2. If we were using interval notation, we would say um, bracket because it includes negative 2 as a range value. And then we would put a comma, and then we'd go positive infinity. And since you can't actually reach infinity, we would put a parenthesis there. This is what we call interval notation. This is what we call set notation. Where is this graph increasing? And where is it decreasing? Well, it's decreasing at x is less than um, 4, and it is increasing at x is greater than 4. Notice it's not increasing or decreasing at 4, so we don't include the, put the equal sign in there. Okay, let's move right on along. So writing an equation in vertex form, I'll let you read through those steps. I'm going to go ahead and jump down to an example. Um, if we're writing a, an equation in vertex form, first we need to identify the vertex, substitute that in, substitute another point in, and then solve for A, and then we can write the equation. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So my vertex here is at 0, negative 4, um, and I'm going to use the point uh, 1, negative 3, to write this equation. So, vertex form is f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. If this looks familiar, this actually comes from uh, the complete the square method. So let's see how we would uh, go ahead and do this. All right, so I know my 
I know my H and my K. That's the X and the Y of the vertex. So I'm going to substitute 0 here. And I'm going to substitute negative 4 here for the K. We're solving for A. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is substitute the point that I chose on the line. Chose a point on the curve. And I'm going to use that to find out the, the uh, value of A. Once I have A, H, and K, I can write my equation. So I'm going to substitute the negative 3 for f of x, which also uh, represents y, a. I'm going to substitute x, uh, 1 for x. And I'm going to rewrite that plus negative 4 as a minus 4. Okay, so now I've got negative 3. Now I'm going to solve this for a. a equals a times 1 squared minus 4. Let's go ahead and uh, simplify that 1 squared since we have exponents. Let's do that next. Negative 3 equals 1a minus 4. 1 squared is just 1. Then we would simply add 4 to both sides. And of course 1a is just a. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. So my final equation is f of x equals 1 times x minus 0 squared minus 4. Now, we always want to simplify our equations down so that they look nice and concise. So this would simplify to f of x equals x squared. x minus 0 is going to be x squared times 1 minus 4, and then we'll go ahead and simplify that down further and just call it x squared minus 4. So there's our equation. Okay, I believe I have time for just one more. So let's go ahead and identify our vertex is at 1, negative 5. And let's use the point this time. Let's use a really simple point. Let's use 0, negative 4. The, the y-intercept's always nice because we have a 0 for the x. And um, that can make things a little simpler to work out. So let's go ahead and write our vertex form. f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And let's go ahead and substitute our values in that equation. So for the f of x, I'm going to put negative 4. I'm solving for a, so I'm going to leave that alone. For x, I'm going to put um, 0. This is my x. This is my y. This is my h. This is my k. Minus, let's see, my h is going to be 1 squared. And then my k is going to be minus 5. Okay, so I've got negative 4 equals a times negative 1 squared minus 5. We'll just keep simplifying that down and solving until we get a all by itself. So negative 4 equals negative 1 to the second power is just going to be 1 times a minus 5. Let's add 5 to both sides. And a equals 1. Okay, so my final equation, just what I was asked to do, solve an e or, or find an equation, write an equation in vertex form, is f of x equals, um, I'm not going to write the 1 in front of the parentheses this time, x minus 1, my h is 1, squared, and instead of plus negative 5, I'm going to go just Right ahead. Go ahead and write negative 5. And this would be my equation of that curve in vertex form. Well, guys, I hope this was helpful. If you hit subscribe in my YouTube channel and, and uh, like, you'll get notifications when I put out new videos. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.